first I want to thank Eric and the Open University of the Left for organizing this uh, opportunity for me to talk about my book. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation that I've managed to boil down to about one hour that applies a somewhat elaborate theoretical framework about the relationship of industrial structure, politics, and labor militancy to two occupational groups in France. However, instead of giving you all that very elaborate, detailed ins and outs of, of the argument, which you can get um, by reading the book yourself, I thought I'd just indicate some of the main themes of the book and suggest um, how they might help us understand current events in France and some of the other questions of uh, theory and politics that many of us here have thought about for a long time and have been involved. Um, so I'll, the idea then is to just kind of give an overview of some of the themes, maybe go into a little bit of depth on some of them, and give um, maybe indicate some ideas on how it can maybe help us think about the longer stretch of French history, including the labor struggles that are currently taking place in France, and then to give us plenty of time for a discussion here. So that's pretty much my plan. Um, my study of work, political identity, and the silk and metal workers of Lyon over the first four decades of the 20th century takes up several types of questions uh, and, and takes, uh, tells several different stories. At its largest level, the book is about the conditions that favor different types of labor politics and consciousness, something that uh, is of interest to the socialist activists here, as well as labor and social historians. Um, I focus on France because that country offers a rich history, a particularly rich history, of popular protests, strikes, demonstrations, all the way to revolutions. And this history involves the revolutions and mass movements of the great French revolutions of 1789, 1830, 1848, the Paris Commune of 1871, the mass wartime strikes during World War, uh, World War I, the great mass mobilizations of the mid-1930s, uh, which my books discuss, uh, the enormous strikes of May 1968, and um, <clears throat> the ongoing struggles right now over social reforms and over uh, the question of retirements in France. So France is, a, is really traditionally been a great place to study the questions that many of us are as activists here have been interested in. Why Lyon? Well, I chose Lyon because apart from its fine culinary tradition, um, it had a, a, a very rich tradition of labor protest. Labor protest, as well as a long and rich industrial history based on the silk trade silk trade that stretches back to the end of the Middle Ages, as well as uh, newer um, industries, uh, emblematic of the second industrial revolution from the second half of the last third of the uh, 19th century all the way up to, say, World War II. Um, that's what that period we call um, industrial, uh, the second industrial revolution. And Lyon had plenty of um, industries in automobile, chemicals, and electricity that were part of that vast uh, industrial movement and development of all the industrialized countries. The silk workers I focus are, are the famous Canu, um, and they were in fact independent artisans uh, who's, who produced silk products with raw silk provided by a merchant in exchange for a tarif, that was their pay. Um, they worked in their own homes at looms that they owned, and the revolts against the merchants over the, over the price of the tariff um, were, um, in 1831 and 1834, were amongst the most important class struggles of the first half of the 19th century. And Karl Marx himself wrote about those, about those struggles. So the silk workers really have a very important connection to local industry alone, in Lyon, the labor movement, and really in the history of popular protest. Uh, early 20th century metal workers uh, working in Lyon's large, medium, and small factories, on the other hand, worked for hourly wages under cl close supervision and encountered tailorist methods instituted by employers anxious to undermine skilled worker shop floor strength. Metal workers were amongst the most radical and combative occupational groups in France and certainly in Lyon. So these are the two occupational groups I looked at to uh, explore um, the formation and reproduction of political identities. Um, why the first four uh, decades of the 20th century? Well, that was a period um, that was one of industrial change and struggles over the organization of production in key economic sectors, struggles over um, um, 
uh, these and other questions. The scientific management movement pioneered by F.W. Taylor and the assembly line system perfected by Henry Ford um, were um, uh, instituted by French employers, which stimulated much of the labor process of the period. Um, those years are also years of a shifting political scene internationally as well as within France that uh, accurately um, reflected social struggles. Now, I want to kind of um, talk a little bit more about the main things by indicating um, the, um, the photo that I was able to select um, thanks to the French Ministry of Labor um, that's on the cover. What we see is um, we see several women workers working in what is a munitions plant. So that's to say they're metal workers. They're working on metal. And they're working in this um, highly mechanized uh, munitions plant during World War I in order to produce for the war effort. Um, however, that factory that they're in had been reconverted from a textile um, dyeing plant. That's to say it was a chemical plant that dyed um, pieces of silk for the silk industry. So the workers previously, perhaps these workers here on the cover, were in fact silk workers who became metal workers during the course of the war. So they linked, the picture links a type of a, a certain type of industrial production and workers in both of my industries. That their women also underscores um, the gender nature of labor and labor processes, which is one of the big themes in the book, how labor really organizes everything from politics to skill uh, to the um, division of workers into different industries. Um, now, so these are some of the big themes I ask. Along the way, I ask questions that, although posed in the framework of academic debates over the last 30 years, parallel questions uh, that have been key in socialist politics and theory. These include, and you'll be familiar with them, uh, how is class consciousness or, consciousness or is identity, as I call it in the book, formed? How is it reproduced across generations? How does it ebb and flow? That's really the largest question. I also ask, what are the conditions that favor or discourage radical militant working class political action? Something that we're, we, many of us here have been quite interested in. The book also takes up debates over fundamental uh, questions of Marxist philosophy like materialism and idealism. In fact, when the book appeared, there was many debates. Um, this was uh, when I began to do the research actually for the um, dissertation upon which the, base, the book is based. I began to um, encounter a, a whole series of debates about questions that seemingly had been answered, but now we're coming back. For example, um, this was the time of uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union. This was the, the time of, um, of um, a, a lot of um, publicity given to postmodern and post-structuralist accounts of social life. And what they meant for labor historians and historians uh, dealing with the issues that I've been interested in was that the very categories that we're used to um, using, like social class, were under attack. So many of those, the, the, in the beginning of my book, I discuss many of these. And these are very large questions that really, really um, um, spread way beyond the walls of academia. And um, so there's our real, real questions of, 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 of Marxist philosophy um, uh, involved here. I also have lots on the labor process and industrial production. I look at automobile workers and uh, work at the Brulier Auto Factory in Lyon, which uh, in the early 20th century was as large as Citroën and Renault. So I really have a great laboratory to look at uh, uh, industrial workers, metal workers, undergoing um, Taylorist methods. And the book also has a lot about politics in Lyon and nationally and its relationship to labor militancy. Um, I want to say a few words about the sources. There's a very interesting source that is the classic source of the French labor historian, and that are and these are police reports. Um, up until really the present time, the government authorities pay um, spies, really, to report on labor meetings. These could be uh, regular uh, union meetings, they could be strike committee meetings, they could be things of that nature. And then they would file a report with the local authorities, which were eventually uh, deposited in uh, the, the local archives and the national archives. And so this has been a great source from everything to learning about um, the labor process.